Hello and welcome back to Stitchy's World. I'm Caitlin and today you're going to find out why I am so headband obsessed. I cannot stop making headbands. If you caught my Vlogmas episode yesterday, I talked all about a I don't know, 18 to 20 of my favorite headband patterns in my Ravelry favorites. Um, but today I thought what I would do is just narrow it down to those that go together really quick and my thoughts and opinions about them and to show you some that I've actually made um, in a better photo quality than the last video was. So here we go. We're going to start with the one that I didn't finish, but I have a good chunk of it done. And this is the Calisson headband. It's a nice wide cable knit um, framed by seed stitch headband slash ear warmer. You can get an idea. It would definitely cover your ears. This is the one that honestly has taken me the longest. And I was trying because I had the day off today. I was thinking, I'm just going to finish it no matter how long it takes. And then I decided, no, <laughs> I'm going to stop while I'm ahead since I do have other things to do. So this bit here, what I figured was I measured how many total inches I needed and how long it's taken me thus far. This headband should knit up in about three hours. So the seed stitch and the cabling just takes a little bit more time than some of the other headbands. Um, but I really love it. And this I'm actually holding two skeins of Brava Worsted. That's a Knit Picks uh, premium acrylic. And I don't usually choose plain acrylic for gifts, but in some cases I think it's just the perfect choice because it's so easy to care for. So this is the Calisson headband and I am really enjoying the cable pattern. It's very simple to memorize. You just have two times where you do your cable and it's an eight row repeat. The next one I'm going to share with you is one that I talked about, but I didn't have a completed one to show you in the last video, and that is the Frida headband. So the Frida headband is a double knit headband in a, let's call it DK weight. In this case, I held several strands together, including a lace weight, a mohair, and a fingering weight yarn. Now the mohair in this um, sample that I have is what gives it kind of the purple. And that is the reason why I think it might not be the right gift for the person I intended it for. But I really love it. It's super luxurious and super warm. I'm just going to slide it on. I know it's not exactly centered and I'm sure my hair looks wonky, but I can tell that this, it's so soft and will definitely be worn because of that double layer of knitting. And the double knit doesn't take twice as long because you cast on 36 stitches and then you knit one, slip one with yarn in front across. You turn it around, it's knit flat back and forth, and you do the same thing. So there's no purling, knitting on both sides, and you end up with a double thickness. So this is one of my favorite headband patterns that I've ever made. and. I can't tell you exactly how long it takes. It did take a bit longer because the gauge is smaller and there's a higher stitch count on it. So give yourself, I would say, four hours would be um, a safe bet for this headband. The Frida headband, so nice. Next is one that I tried out for the first time today. Now this is the Arrowwood headband. And this features a really simple lace pattern that is over a, a stitch count of 17 stitches. So it's easy to keep track of your lace if and when I forgot a yarn over. I could easily go back and say, wait a minute, I'm not at 17 stitches anymore. Where did I miss that yarn over? So it's an easy pattern to pick up on. I was able to memorize this one. There is a center double decrease that runs through the middle of it. And that I think is such a nice element. It really kind of ties it together and gives it a feeling of structure, the lace. I enjoyed making this. I was timing myself and it took me about two hours to put this together this afternoon. I'm gonna try it on here so you can see how it fits. Now this one obviously would not be as warm just because of the open nature of the knit, but it does, 
it feels like it would be somewhat warm. Um, I chose to hold four strands together, so I have a really nice, warm, bulky uh, fiber that's gonna catch keep a lot of the warmth in, even though there is space where wind could get in. Now my hair covers my ears also, so if that's the case of your recipient, then you don't have to worry about it, or if you're knitting it for yourself. Um, a couple of notes about the pattern. One is I would suggest doing a provisional cast on and doing a graft uh, to finish. I did not. I followed the directions verbatim and I kind of got into a little bit of a sticky situation at the end. So you can see the seam at the end of the knit. I am a very literal person and the directions have you finish your lace repeat and then the next thing it says to do is to cut your yarn leaving a 12 inch tail and weave in your, uh, sew the ends together and weave in your ends. Well the problem was it never told you to cast off. I ended up casting off and then just doing the mattress stitch and to do the mattress stitch I almost think that this is a neater seam that you cannot see on the wrong side than this on the right side, which is a very pronounced seam. I think the provisional cast on would be a better choice. It would be quicker and neater. And finally, I'm gonna show you what is still my favorite headband. Now this is the fourth or fifth one I've made. And that is the not quite a blizzard. I feel like this is the most underrated headband on the internet right now. It is a beautiful brioche stitch. I love the gather in the middle of it. It's super chunky, so it goes really fast. It's so cozy. I just absolutely love it. All of these headbands tell you to knit them to about 18 inches or about an inch shorter than, um, where it would be able to meet on your head. I tend to want my headbands to be a little bit tighter because I do think that they stretch a little bit with wear, but that's a personal preference. So I did mine a little bit smaller, but I just think this came out looking so polished. Now this is Knit Up in Loopy Mango Dream Merino. It's 100% Merino wool. So it will pill if you get any kind of friction on it, but as a headband, I don't think you're going to run into the problems that you would face if you tried to make, say, fingerless mitts out of this yarn. So I can't say enough great things about this pattern. It's well written. It's easy to start. It's easy to finish. This one does use a provisional cast on um, and then just a simple gathering through this live stitches at the end with your yarn, tying it a couple of times around and that's it. So there you have it. My favorite headbands. Um, Hopefully I'll be able to finish this one up soon and use it as a gift. I was thinking this year, maybe what I'll do for my sister-in-law is to give her a little assortment of headbands. The colors all kind of work and they're, I think they're all unique enough that given different situations, one might find the perfect headband to wear. That's all for today. Thank you for joining me and I hope that you find a pattern that makes you very excited to work on it. And until then, I'll see you next time.